Hi there, homespun friends. It is Sherry, and I'm here today with my very special guest, the love of my life, my husband, Vince, also known as Pastor and also known as Doc, I often call that. And today he is going to be sharing with us something you've all been wanting to know, how he doctors up cake mix to make it better. So I'm going to turn it over to him without further ado. Okay, okay. thank yeah. you, honey. My wife asked me to be here kind of against my will, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad to share. I love to bake. I love to bake. Uh, one of the first things I do when I'm going to bake just a regular white cake, and this is what this is. Now, I make all kinds of cakes. I make uh, uh, coconut cakes from scratch. I make um, carrot cakes from scratch. I make cheesecake from scratch. But you can't hardly be just a white cake mix. I don't think it's cheating to use a white cake mix out of the box because I really can't make it any better than what they do. However, there's a couple of things I do that might help you when you're baking a cake. The first thing I do, of course, put my oven on uh, to about 350 degrees. The next thing I do is I wash my hands. That's uh, kind of a thing for me throughout the process. I wash my hands several times. Uh, I take out my cake mix and I open it up and then I use a sifter. This is kind of a big one, but I sift uh, the uh, cake mix into a bowl or into the bowl of the mixer. I have a what is it? Kitchen aid. Kitchen aid yeah. mixer, and I can mix it right into that. Uh, I think it kind of helps it. It kind of freshens up uh, the material itself because you don't know how long it's been in the oven. Uh, generally, I will use the parchment paper if I'm making it, whether it's a round cake or an 8 by 14, whatever. I'll put the parchment paper you know, in there so there'd be no sticking to the pan itself. Uh, I follow the directions. Uh, for this particular cake, it is a cup and a quarter of water, or a quarter cup. And sometimes I will use a little less water. It might be a cup and just you know a little slice under a fourth of a cup. And it says here a half a cup of vegetable oil. And I will make the difference up. You know, if I put a little less water in there, I add a little bit more vegetable oil to the mix. And then it says five egg whites. Now, this is important. If you're using normal size eggs, if you look at it and you don't feel you have enough egg whites, sometimes I will add a sixth egg white if I think the eggs are too small. If they're extra large eggs, then I'll go ahead and use the five eggs. I put in my water and my vegetable oil and I mix it for a couple of minutes. I get the air uh, into the mixture and then I slowly add my egg whites. Once I get it to the consistency that I like it, and I make sure that my pans have been lightly floured and then have that parchment paper in it, I pour, and I kind of guess, I guess if I'm making two pans, I guess how much I'm putting in there, and I've been pretty successful at that. Now my oven is small, so generally I can only bake one at a time, but I follow the directions, and for this particular one here, it is probably, oh, I don't know, uh, 20, 25 minutes. Uh, kind of watch it close. You have to know your stove or your oven. Uh, so you kind of know, you know, how hot it gets and how long it takes to bake a cake. So uh, I watch my cake pretty close. I time it. I put my timer on. If it's you know 20 minutes, I might put it at 21. Uh, but I watch it around the 20 minute mark. I take it out, reset my timer because I got to put the other one in. And that kind of speeds up time because when you put it on a timer and when that time reaches its conclusion, it shuts the oven off. And if you mess around a minute or two, it's going to take it a little bit of time to get back up to 350 degrees. Um, take it out, uh, give it a few minutes uh, to kind of cool off. I'll take a particular tool and kind of go around it to make sure that there's, it's not sticking. And then I have another kind of a frame and I'll kind of Put it over on I've that. Got a cooling rack. Yeah, and you'll cooling kinda, rack. Yeah, flip it. And mm -hmm. uh, professional word is frame. <laughs> <laughs> so I use that cooling rack. Right. But I think the best part of baking is you enjoy doing it. So I don't know if my cakes taste any better. Now, if uh, one of my grandkids is having a birthday party, I will generally make the cake the night before or the morning of. So it's very important for me, if I'm sharing a cake, that it is as fresh as possible. I don't want to bake a cake. I don't freeze them, put them in the freezer, and then pull them out. If they melt in your mouth, it's because they've just basically been made. Great thing about a white cake, they all taste the same. The reason you just use the egg whites and not the whole egg, the yolk 
will turn the uh, cake yellow. Nothing wrong with that, but it's not gonna look like a white cake. So you separate the yolk from the white and uh, keep that in a, a different uh, bowl. And then you, uh, I don't know what you wanna do with the yolks. You know, some people may keep them for something else. I'll be honest, you know, I'll probably throw mine away. May be wrong, but that's what I do. And uh, my icing, I don't know mm -hmm. if you wanna do that now. Wait yeah, for we can come. talk about the icing because he does not use a lard icing. And mm -hmm. what is the difference between like a lard icing and a cream cheese frosting or icing? Taste. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cream cheese one always tastes better. I don't know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a shortening based icing, mm -hmm. it does have its uh, strong points because you can really decorate with it if you're using it holds its shape yeah, if you're I, using mm -hmm. a piping tool that uh, shortening uh, whether it's vegetable based or lard or whatever it will hold where you use a uh, cream cheese butter it's not going to hold as good but it tastes 10 times better I'm telling you so you know with a typical cake I will use two uh, eight ounce cream cheese Try to, try to get it to room temperature, uh, and then one stick of butter, and uh, make sure that butter is very soft, because you have to mix your butter and your cream cheese together. You now, does it, it matter if you use salted or unsalted butter? You know, some different people say different yeah. things. We it usually really, use salted. But, yeah, yeah. You use whatever you have in your refrigerator. Because <laughs> it's th since it's that day, you know, I'm really not yes, worried yeah. about it. Yes, right. Uh, but I will use the butter mm -hmm. and then the cream cheese, and then um, probably a tablespoon of vanilla, uh, extract. It's great if you can get, uh, you know, authentic, but sometimes you have to use uh, imitation. Now, if you're wanting a white cake mix, you know, a white cake icing, you're probably going to have to get an imitation white vanilla. vanilla. I, yeah, because mm -hmm. it will taint it. It'll kind of give it a little t uh, taint. Um, you mix that in there and then you have your um, sugar, your confectioner sugar. So many times I will sift the confectioner sugar as well because you don't want any kind of clump of sugar. Somebody's eating your cake and eating your icing and you've not sifted it properly and they get a chunk Yeah, and of you that. can see sometimes there's little yeah. specks if you don't get it really. Yeah, yeah not for that. <laughs> yeah, not for that. Uh, and you can use, you know, it's up to you, uh, six, seven cups of uh, confectioner's uh, sugar. You're better off to have a little more than a little less at the end of the cake because it's very frustrating. You've baked this cake and you've got this icing, but you don't have enough to finish the cake. So it, it's not that expensive uh, to make a little bit more. And if you have it left over, then you can you know, discard it or put it in the refrigerator if you choose. To we know some sometimes more. we'll give it to the grandchildren and they'll dip like pretzels or yeah. fruit or something yeah. and a little bit of leftover frosting. Yeah, and that's like a frosting like if you use like strawberries. Right. You make, now that is a great icing. <laughs> but it's all done out of love. And I think that's the main thing. People have asked me, why don't you sell? Why don't you go into a, a business? Well, I bake out of love. <laughs> and not that people get paid don't yeah but um it is it is a labor of love and i love baking for my grandchildren and i have a saying there's no cake i can't bake <laughs> so if i get the recipe uh, all it is folks is following the recipe and uh you can call it a recipe you can call it a formula but i'm very exact and I think too, after you bake something for a while, let's say you have a white cake mix or you've baked that numerous times or any other type of thing like a cheesecake, you begin to learn other things you can do to perfect it over yeah. time. Like you've always said, when you're making a cheesecake, you, you really can't use the generic cream cheese. No. But if you're making icing, you can use like the Aldi brand cream cheese. Right. What What's the difference there? I think it's the fat content. And okay. a Philadelphia cream cheese, which is more expensive, but if you're making a cheesecake and you get online, get a New York style cheesecake, and which is my favorite, uh, you have to use a uh, Philadelphia cream cheese. The fat contents are. Now, if you're just making icing, it doesn't make any difference. You can buy the generic uh, cream cheese. Because you're not really baking that icing, right? right, right. And I never knew that because sometimes I would use the inexpensive uh, cream cheese and there would be spots on my on cake. cheesecake. It didn't yeah. take, affect the taste, yeah. but it, I didn't like the way that it looked. And I was at an Aldi's and I was talking to a lady and she told me, you have to have Philadelphia cream cheese to make a cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why? 
And she said, because of the fat content, it's higher and it will bake better. And you know what? It made sense. It, and you tried it and it worked. I tried it and it worked. It's great to have tips from other people that maybe have done things. Yeah, and I'm shocked at what I can learn on YouTube. I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah, shocked. I can bake anything. If I want to make a recipe, Paula Dean is one of my favorite uh, people to watch. Uh, but you get on YouTube, type in recipe, and so many people are so willing to share. And I am. I don't have any secret recipe. <laughs> if I make something and somebody says, how do you do that? I'm excited to tell them. Well, this is my recipe. That's right. Now, let's talk about the kinds of birthday cakes that we have made for our grandchildren. You have made countless ones. And one of my most memorable ones was for our granddaughter that was turning 10. She's 13 now. And I think we made her a luau cake. Do you yeah. remember that one? I remember the luau, but I can't remember the cake. I think what we did is we had like, we would use some blue frosting. You took the cream cheese and put <coughs> coloring in it and mm -hmm. made like a little, uh, like a little, I guess you'd call it pond. Mm -hmm. And we took, I think, graham crackers for sand wow. and crushed them up. And do you remember okay. that? We also had bought a little kit and we do this a lot for our grandkids when they tell us what kind. We'll go to Amazon and buy a little kit to accentuate whatever you've baked. You know, and I think that time we did a mermaid theme for the luau okay. part. And we had the little tail of the mermaid coming up out of the cake. And yeah. it was cute. And we had a couple little umbrellas on it. Okay. That was a cute cake. And you made a Spider-Man cake. Spider-Man cake. And my wife helps me decorate. And yeah. she is a great decorator. That's not my strong suit. Uh, there is a class coming up at a community college in August. And I'm looking into it because I've kind of retired or uh, yes, from right. full-time ministry. That's right. And i got other things to do. Right. But I love to bake. And if I could get to a class that would make me better, uh, you know, I'm going to check in. And that would be so enjoyable, I think, for mm -hmm. him to do that. He gets a lot of joy. Now, what I do is I stay in the bedroom and on my computer while he's doing most of his baking to get well, him yeah. free reign of the kitchen yeah, because I don't want to mess him up. She gets mad but, and all that. No. <laughs> But what I do is I'll let him do his thing and then I'll come in sometimes and help wash dishes or I'll just put like the deck, the, the uh, icing on maybe the cake or the cupcakes yeah. or something to help out. Yeah. But other than that, I just let you do your thing because I really like turning it over. And before we close, I'd like for you to tell what you made me for breakfast this morning. Okay, today uh, we got up early and uh, I made a pan of homemade uh, buttermilk biscuits. And uh, what I use is uh, two cups of self-rising flour, and then I use a stick of butter. And you have to grate the butter. The butter has to be grated, but it has to be can remember to be cold. So generally, I keep my butter in a freezer. And when I have this little machine that's a grinder. Like a rotary grater. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So you grind your, your butter and put it back in the freezer. Now, you use one stick of butter. Uh, you use two cups of self-rising flour. Your oven is set, listen to this, 475 degrees, hot. So, mm -hmm. and I also use a particular kind of pan. Cast iron pan. I'll show you guys that in a future <coughs> video. We just bought that this spring, mm -hmm. and I think it's made a big difference, don't you? Yes, and the I biscuits, do. they rise and do so beautifully well. And I was supposed to be buttermilk, but I didn't have any. But there's a, I wouldn't call it a cheat, <laughs> but you can take regular milk, a uh, cup, and I added a tablespoon of lemon juice. You can also add a tablespoon of vinegar. And you can let it set. And Jen, I put it back in the refrigerator for 10 minutes. The key to good buttermilk biscuits is that the product, the, the butter has to be frozen and the milk has to be ice cold. So you sift your uh, two cups of self-rising flour. You put your butter in, it's already been cut up, right. and you kind of mix it together where the flour kind of adheres to the butter. Then you pour in uh, the buttermilk your part. buttermilk part. And you work fast, don't you? Very fast. Now, you also prepare your site with flour, you know, wherever you're using it. Okay. So you're just a few seconds, you get that going, then you toss that onto the table, and then you don't work it like you would bread. You're talking just a few seconds. You fold it maybe six times. Just whap, 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 whap. Get it. I don't use a roller. I use my hands and kind of push it out. And then I have all my supplies there, you know, like the, uh, the biscuit cutter. I cut out the biscuits. I don't pinch them off or twist them. I just push them straight down. And then I put them on that cast iron pan. I make sure my biscuits touch each other. Okay? So they're all touching. And it works out to where the whole pan's full. By then, it's reached 475 degrees. Place it in, set it on about 10 minutes, 11 minutes, depending upon your oven. Go ahead and get a little bit of a dabble of butter, put it in the microwave, and melt it. Got to be real careful because it's hot. 
you put a place out a mat to put your cast iron uh, pan on it because at that 10 minute mark or 11 minute mark, whatever, you take it out, put your oven on broil, but take it out, take that butter that you've melted with a brush and you brush that butter brush that it on, melted, the yeah, on the hot biscuits. Mm -hmm. And then it's on broil, you put it back in and now you're watching because you got it on broil, it's gonna change in a hurry. What that butter does is give your biscuits that browning look to it. You know, you don't saturate them, but you just kind of cover them where that broil is gonna make that biscuit look brown and you pull those out and they will melt in your mouth. The key is speed. You want that butter frozen, that milk as cold as it can be when it goes in the oven, it makes the biscuits rise. And then you take it out and uh, can you, you show us them. about how thick you pat out your dough? It's, when you, it's probably about... It's not like skinny. It's no, not no, like no. real flat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my biscuits come out, they're... They're about like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so when you do your dough, you know, you have... You don't make them real flat. You you, 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 you want to go get a biscuit? Yeah. He's okay. going to go... Okay. He's going to walk in there and show you one of the biscuits that we had this morning. So while he's doing that, I will entertain you momentarily um, to tell you that I love to make homemade breads from fresh milled grains from flour. I do a lot of like our sandwich bread and sourdough bread and things like that. But my husband does all the biscuits and all the dessert baking. He is wonderful with like um, gingerbread cookies and uh, all kinds of treats. He makes pies like pecan pies and pumpkin pies for the holidays. And so he's, he's the one that loves to do all the desserts. These are his biscuits from this morning. And you can take a look at what these look like. Uh, they are amazing. And let me tell you, um, yeah, my waistline, uh, I'm not sure if my waistline loves them as much as my mouth does, but they are so good. And this morning he also scrambled us up some eggs. And so while I was working, I was surprised I came out and he had prepared his breakfast. It's amazing. I watched a chef do eggs. You think, well, how hard is scrambled eggs? Yeah. You throw it in the thing. <laughs> That's right. But I watched a guy and uh, he used butter in a pan and he had his pan kind of about a medium high before he put the eggs in there. He whipped up eggs just enough to get them uh, kind of whipped up together, not too much. Uh, had it with the butter, put the eggs in, pulled the eggs kind of towards the center as, you know, as they were cooking, and he added a little bit of butter you know, in the eggs. Didn't fool with them long. Uh, it doesn't take long to do uh, scrambled eggs. And they're fluffy. And so they were we so had, good, they didn't have any dryness to no, them at all. Were so so we had the, the eggs, and then we made some homemade peach jelly a couple of weeks ago. And I can't believe it. We're like on our last jar and of peach jelly. We had made like five jars. And yeah. We might have given one away no, in the rest, I think. We well, then, we, then we ate a couple. And it's just been wild to see that it's gone so fast because it was delicious. Yeah. It and it's our experimenting with canning. Uh, you know, the canning, doing different types of canning this summer. That's what we're wanting to delve into next. Yeah. So just stick around because you have no ideas what That's right. adventures await. One of my church members is supposed to bring me some okra. <gasps> and I thought, man, I've always loved pickled okra. We might give that a try. You just That's never right. know. One summer we made pickled beets. We did do that yes. and they turned out fantastic. Very good. Very good. So I want to have um, my husband back again in a future video to show you more things, not only about baking, but I know that so many of my followers and subscribers have been asking about that sermon series yes. that inspired me to start <clears throat> scripture writing and had the little bottle there. And I have mm -hmm. some bottles. I told them that at that time, we might do a giveaway of some of those bottles we have left over from 2017. Right. And I know that you said you had your notes there right. and you're just going to work on those a little bit. Yeah. Yes. And come uh, when, back and talk to us. When you write every week. Now, mm -hmm. my, my dissertation uh, was on the use of structural mnemonic devices for content retention in expository preaching. And a nutshell is how can you remember things? So throughout my sermons, I would use objects that would hopefully allow you to remember the sermon longer than you normally would. And it did. So <laughs> it the, the bottle, uh, I think it was a, a message we put in there, and it would be something that was decorative, but hopefully something that would have a effect on you years down the road. Mm -hmm. And even your children or grandchildren, you know, if they're cleaning out your house or whatever, they find that, and then they see what was important to you on that paper That's at right. that time. So a sermon is good when it's written, 
and it's good when it's delivered, mm -hmm. but hopefully it will have an effect years after it. So the That's bottle exactly was right. just something that I used. Yes. It was a little um, mnemonic device not, for us to help yeah. remember, and it's helped me all these years, and I know others have remembered that bottle as well. And I had told them that I think one of the uh, messages you preached was on the importance of doing, maybe committing one year to doing something all year long that proves to God that you love him. And I know somebody said, well, obedience is the way the scriptures tell us to show we love God. Well, that's true. But we can have other demonstrations as well to show God that we are dedicated to him. And scripture writing was the one I chose. Yeah. And then I think another area that you spoke was about how in our lives we have broken places mm -hmm. and how we can give those broken places to God and he can use them yeah. to glorify him. And so these were some of the notes that I had from your sermon. So we're going to have you back and you'll okay. talk about some other things in the future. And I thank you for being here. Well, thank you for letting me share. <laughs> yes. There we go. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And like always, I look forward to seeing Bye -bye. you next time. Bye-bye.